fun begin. Come here, Hunter. All right, so the highly anticipated day is here. The uh, Old Town kayak has arrived. <clears throat> I'm thankful for uh, Nautical Ventures in Florida. So you would have to be hiding under a rock not to know that uh, everything, um, everything is either delayed behind out of production or of course, outrageously expensive. Uh, you know, they're blaming it on COVID. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm not even gonna get into that crap. Uh, but politics and, and uh, trading and uh, tariffs and everything else is just crazy. But anyways, <clears throat> so I've got a Hobie and I love my Hobie and I will keep my Hobie, but I wanted a second kayak to take somebody uh, out with me. Uh, well, actually, it's like a fourth or fifth kayak because I have paddle kayaks as well. Um, I have two other uh, Old Town kayaks as well as some Ascend kayaks. But anyways, I wanted to buy another pedal drive kayak uh, to take uh, people out, you know, to be able to uh, uh, go on the Fallen Outdoors uh, website and say, hey, I want to take, uh, take a vet out uh, with me. You don't need to bring anything, just bring yourself and we'll have a good time. But uh, I wanted to be different than the Hobie. I wanted to go ahead and uh, buy a, a different kayak. So I was looking at the Native Slayer 10s and I was looking at the... Uh, Old Town PDL 106s. I wanted it to be smaller and lighter than the Outback. I didn't want to go heavier than the Outback. I do not like trailers. Um, I do not like asking for assistance to move or haul kayaks. Uh, and the Hobie uh, Outback is perfect in weight at, at where it's at, fully loaded for me. So I didn't want to go heavier than that. Um, then come production issues in uh, available inventory no one had the Slayer 10 or the uh, 106 PDL uh, finally I found a dealer in Arkansas that had a Slayer 10 coming in on a truck and I was this close to buying it in fact I, I was I was gonna buy it the next day I was gonna go get it uh, and then as luck would have it uh, Alex from Nautical Adventures in Florida uh, seen me looking for something and uh, he sent me an email and said hey I, he said I've got three brand new 106 PDLs he said I am willing to ship to you um, to me the the old town uh, warranty is way better than uh, uh, the native slayer and uh, I think the hull is a little bit thicker and more durable so I said you know if shipping is not too bad I said let me go ahead and uh, uh, take the 106 PDL. Shipping was outrageous. It was uh, $600. Uh, but uh, Alex at Nautical Adventures hooked me up and uh, he actually paid for over half of the shipping out of his pocket to get me this thing. So without further ado, 106 PDL, we're gonna go ahead and unwrap this bad boy. Super stoked. Thank you. 
pretty doggone nice there. Pretty doggone nice. Alright. Do like it. Alright. What we're going to do is we're just going to set it right here for now. Because I know it's going to go on that pipe. Okay. This kayak seems to have more orange in it than others that I have seen. I guess the ratio of orange to gray to black. No big, I mean, I like orange. Uh, but it just, it seems a lot brighter in the center than some of the other ones that I've seen. Could be just me. Okay? Right. Now, the seat goes on these knobs. And I'll show you my my first. So it looks like I don't know if the sticker shifted or someone just put it on crooked, but yeah, it was yeah. Okay, that was, okay, pull to release. Oh, right there. Okay, pull to release right there, okay? Yeah, buddy. And so these go on here. Kind of nice. Huh. Now I'm totally doing the man thing right now by not reading the instructions. And of course, with the two thousand dollar boat, I've got to read the instructions. Okay. What I want to do. started pamphlet in this parts kit labeled Old Town Little Tackle Tray. It's kind of cool. As well as the owner's manual and then some, some parts in here. I don't know if you can see them all, but a paddle holder, which will definitely be installing. All right, the last step is the uh, PDL drive. And basically, I mean, it's all together. But what needs to happen is this. It's in a lock position. Twist it to unlock. Pull the, the pipe out. And your pipe goes inside here. Okay. And it looks like... Let me loosen that up. It's got some, it's got some cams, some cams on the inside that need to be loosened up, okay? And then you center this bad boy, right? And I would assume People that have issues 
with their drive not lining up in the locks, right? Oh, he can overturn it though. That's weird. Okay. 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 So then you lock it down. And then people, you pull it up, pull it up, lock right there, right? Yeah, right there. Okay. So, I don't want to pull it. But, you pull it. Okay. So, I don't know. The knob must be engaged to achieve proper sealing around the console. In the event of a high impact object strike, the lock knob should break into pieces. Replacement knobs are available. So I'm assuming that is the correct position. Lock. I'm assuming that is the correct position, not all the way over. Okay. So this is it at a at a glance. The 106 PDL. I uh, definitely need to make sure my battery box will fit inside this hatch. And I don't, man, I don't know if it will or won't. We're gonna have to try that out. I will tell you, I love this handle. It's strong. It's comfortable. It looks pretty sturdy. I like that handle. Drain plug. Looks like with a rubber O-ring seal in it. That's pretty cool. Um, under seat storage. Awesome. Pockets here. I don't know where I'm going to have to figure out what, what I put in there because they're kind of small. Um, I will tell you one thing that I do not like that I see right off the bat. No cup holder. The cockpit looks roomy. I like that. The seat looks comfortable. This was a big uh, decision point between the native uh, Slayer 10. The native Slayer 10 seat to me just looked really cheap. Uh, this is, looks like it's better quality. It's, Definitely got some padding to it. I got some stitching coming out. I'm gonna have to burn that. All right. But it's definitely a nice seat. Oh, I gotta set that Velcro, it looks like. Okay, under seat storage, scuppers. This is an access point. I know a lot of people call it a cargo area. Oh, I dropped my screwdriver. A lot of people call it a cargo hatch. I really wouldn't use it as a cargo hatch, but excess point to run cables, definitely. Tank well. Uh, it looks like a really nice tank well, minus you're losing, I don't know, nine inches because of this. If it stows, if it stows like that, I guess, you'd be okay. I don't know, we're gonna see, we're gonna find out. Shallow water anchor mount already on here. That's kind of cool, except I'll never use one because I don't fish that shallow water a lot of times. But I'll bet I can put a track on there for my cameras. Rod holders. Oh, doggone, there's a cup holder right there. But it's under the seat. No, it's not. No, it's not. There is a cup holder. Well, I have to take back what I just said. Nice cup holder. Okay. It's not very deep, but yeah. Okay. Cockpit's pretty nice. Very cool. I'm excited. Uh, time to put a few mods on this thing and uh, we're going to take it out for a test.
probably in another video. So for the transducer mount, of course it goes right here in them holes and up through the scupper. What I did for the Garmin, this is the uh, 73. I had to modify the bracket. I'm going to pull it off. So I ground down that bracket. You can see, see that tip right there, the edge? That actually come out almost a half inch. And I ground that down. And then I ground that piece down for the mount to put it on backwards in order to get it closer to the hull. So basically, this is the normal way it mounts. But it was too far out. So if I flip it that way, it'll get me closer to the hull. And then just to be sure, I gooped everything really well. And that will act not only as a sealant, but an extra level of security. All right, so that's the transducer mounted with some goop on it. But uh, it looks, it's a lot lower profile than uh, what it was before i'm hoping this works so it's got if it bangs it'll move right see so i'm hoping i don't know i'm hoping that'll work we're gonna find out so robohawk has been a huge supporter of <clears throat> moyak missouri kayak anglers club but uh for this kayak, I went with another company called uh, Never Lost. And I received their products and I've been opening it for the first time. And I just want to show you the quality that's put into these products. So it's the similar 550 cord. But let me tell you, the quality is flawless. It is way cool. So these are called quick disconnect leashes because they got a buckle on them to disconnect them. Um, Robohawk or the other companies, Rogue, I've used both of them. And I got to tell you, I'm pretty impressed with these. I'm excited. This one has got... This is a rod leash with a braided collar to go around the handle. Way cool. It's got a swivel on it. Mm -hmm. And then they come with carabiners. Locking carabiners. Okay. And then I also got a tow rope. And the cool thing is this color uh, really matches what I wanted to do with the kayak. So if you can see, I've already traded out the black cordage shock cord for gray <laughs> um this is an older uh crate that i had that i've built but in reality i'm going to use this crate that i'm starting to build now but that'll be the actual crate that goes in there i'm pretty sure i'm just waiting on my new rod holders i don't want to pull the ones off of this because this actually belongs on another kayak All right, so here it is, all decked out for its initial voyage. I uh, got my never lost gear leashes and tow rope in here. I did change the color of my bungees. I got my 
Garmin 73 ran. I didn't drill any holes, so I don't know right now if this is going to be the long-term solution. But for now, for tomorrow's maiden voyage, I swapped the pedals out to some of the bicycle pedals I had laying around. But I got my leashes and my rod holders on. I got the good old Garmin mounted on a ram ball. I've got my tools, my knife, my whistle, catch board. All right. I've got this box that I'm going to use, and then I went ahead and made my my light pole and my GoPro mount. I went ahead and added a track back here in the rear. They don't have no tracks in the rear. So I went ahead and put a yak track on the back. Alright. This is it. I got my flag for when it's in the back of my truck. I've got my my uh, catch board tethered as well. And I added a light. See that's a red light too, but, but that's it. She's wide, so it's next to my my outback. I don't know if you can. I'm gonna try to zoom out. If you can tell that, I mean the width is it's a few inches wider. So on paper, I think it's 36, 36 versus 33. But you can definitely tell. I would uh, venture to say it's more stable. I don't know. We're going to find out tomorrow, though. I'm uh, really looking forward to it. She's ready to go. Stay tuned for more videos.